Remember the super big secretary we were working on last week? And the inspiration from Aunt Eeks? Here's where we got so far when we last left you. If you remember, I used a coat of Boss Primer on the side and also here on the front, and now I'm applying a coat of Sandbar, which was the base coat that we used on the side as well. If you remember, uh, I'm doing this for a client, and the inspiration was from Aunt Eeks. Well, guess what? I actually spoke to Aunt Eek, and she does have a YouTube channel. She was busy getting her son ready for college, so we're going to talk next week. This is a big job, so it may end up being a three-parter, but it's coming along nicely. As a lot of you know, I'm also moving and changing the name of my business. So we'll soon be statement designs and we'll be um, closed as of today uh, in the old location with the old name and then we'll reopen as statement designs on the 19th. So my client wanted a little bit um, not so bright color for the inside so I chose Cape Current uh, from the silk line. I thought that would be really good on the inside. And there were some ink marks in there that were kind of raised. It was like ink was spilled. So I just sanded those and gave it all a scuff sanding. I'm doing a dry fit to make sure that the insert glides in real nicely. And also uh, just to take a, a quick look and just see anything that ne might need adjusted. But it slid in beautifully because that isn't always the case with these. Um, sometimes they're a struggle and I didn't want it to scrape my paint after I got done painting. So I take it back out so that I can paint the back. And again, I'm using Cape Current. I love this color. Usually I say it has a, almost a purpley hint, but I'm not seeing it with this coloration. So um, I'm just loving this color with that uh, paper that's from Zazzle. So that's what Aunt Eek used, and I'm anxious to get to know her so I can call her by name. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love using this brush, and I'm going to show it to you in a minute. This is uh, from Zebra, and I'm showing you my inspiration here real quick. I just wanted you to see that... Um, she painted the back and also the door in there. So there's, there's some of it that's going to be left natural. So here's that brush. It's Zebra Square brush. It's awesome, especially in this application, as you can see. It allows me to get into those corners. And then it's also big enough that I can do the flat sections. And it's not like a round or a triangle brush that I need to worry about ruining the brush. So I love it. And I use a small painter's brush for the outside edges. Now our drawer fronts pose a bit of a problem because in the inspiration they used cup pulls. But our drawer fronts aren't flat. They are curved. So I had to think of something that was a good solution. And I checked with my client to see if this would work for her. Um, so she really wanted the shiny and I assured her that this would be shiny as well. So what I'm doing is I'm using Amazing Casting Resin and a first generation iron orchid design mold and i am these are the label molds and i'm actually just kind of going to use them over the old um drawer pull and change it to a one knob pull they used to be the batman <laughs> um pulls that had the little handle so i'm pouring this epoxy and I want to get it out of the molds quickly so that I can form it to that curve. That's the whole idea of using this. So look at it curing before your eyes. I just, it's warm, so it's just crazy how it's just setting up real quickly. But while we're waiting for it to finish, I'm going to go over and prep these drawers a little bit, get rid of the original um, escutcheon plates around the lock. We're going to reuse those. She does have the other two, um, so she, they kept everything, but uh, 
kind of glad they didn't include the drawer pulls so that we could come up with this different solution. So I'm just cleaning them. I'm using the white lightning. Now it automatically kind of dulls down the finish because the drawer fronts are going to be um, natural. So we're just going to kind of revive them and make them look pretty. Uh, but we need to do a little bit of cleaning and sanding uh, just because the surface wasn't perfect on them. There were like little paint splatters. Someone must have had it in storage and somehow splattered paint on it. So that happens. It wasn't a big, a whole lot of paint, but it was enough that I needed to get rid of it because it would have been noticeable whenever I redid the finish. There's also a couple little spots on the corners where the veneer has chipped up. Not exactly 100% sure yet how I'm going to deal with that. Um, I might try to repair the veneer. Uh, we'll see. Um, I do have some veneer that maybe I can match and piece in. That's a new trick for me, but I've seen it done and uh, I'm sure I can handle doing it. But I'm trying to unmold that because like I said, I wanted to get it before it got real uh, hard in the mold. But it was too soon for that try. So now I'm trying again. Only a few minutes later. And now it's coming out nicely. But you can see that it's still flexible. Okay. So I am able to adapt it to that curve. It's still a little sticky. So it kind of stays there nicely. I just want to make sure I have it placed right. Now this is not going to stay here permanently this moment. I'm just positioning it so I can get that curve. And what I'm going to do is tape it down so that it adapts to that curve. And when it cures hard, that it will have that curve shape already. Um, I'm going to do that with all of them. And as I pour, I end up having some extra. So... I use different shapes. I'm trying to figure out my placement for the decoupage paper. I have two sheets and I want to save for the butterflies for use on the sides. So there's a large teapot design. I could butt the other one up against it, but I don't want two teapots on there. I mean, I just feel like that's a big design and that's not necessary to have two of them so I start to tear the paper apart um, I know that I want to make a seam and that uh, design that's at the top I'll keep that because um, to just end that abruptly would be weird so <laughs> I want to tear the paper so that it's kind of a you know, gentle edge, you know, it's not just a straight flat edge. And, um, yeah, so I'm really thinking about this long and hard, but in a minute, I'm just going to tear in and start literally tearing paper. I start in the upper right corner and I am using the square edge of my, uh, paper to go along that. Um, and then I've torn the bottom so that that piece is just kind of trailing off and ending naturally. I line up the sides and the top and just kind of go slowly, removing the wrinkles as I go.
I used some plastic wrap to smooth out the wrinkles. I never did this before. I see a lot of people do it. And I'm really glad I did. It really helped make uh, a smooth result. There are still a few wrinkles, but I kind of like them. They're not deep wrinkles. They just kind of look like the nice lines that you get in maybe a leather uh, top. So I think, I think it looks really nice. I continue to add the other two pieces that I tore. Um, I'm doing this one on the straight edge. So I'm kind of tearing that so that it's straight. And then I apply both of those pieces on the, the front of the secretary as well. I find the tissue paper actually has a little bit of stretch to it, so I have to be careful not to distort the image that much. I now cover the entire front again with a satin clear coat. Next I use the adhesive Stick With Me on all of the pieces that I had poured for the, the back plate for the drawer pulls. I'm putting on a glove because this stuff is sticky. I'm just using a brush to apply the Stick With Me product to each of the castings. After they dry, I come back with the gold part um, which is the shine portion of this so you're supposed to let it sit 15 minutes and I don't think I waited that long so I don't get a great result here but I don't know that it's necessarily the fault of the product because I've used it uh, in less than 15 minutes before and had really good results so I think that it might just be the material, the um, Amazing Casting Resin, that's not accepting the product all that well. I do get a little bit, and I'm very happy with what I have, as you'll see my result. I cut enough of the shine tape to cover each piece, and then I take a little piece of finishing pad and then I just burnish down the shine. As you see, it didn't completely cover. It goes really well over the smooth areas, but those areas with all the detail is where I had problems. They aren't quite giving me the results I was looking for, but I'm not discouraged because I know that I have other products that will help me achieve this goal. I return to the front of the secretary and use my fan deck to match up some colors in the decoupage paper. If you 
sell Dixie Belle paint, then you have access to one of these. If you don't and you use the paint, then check with your uh, retailer and see if they can get you a fan deck because it's so helpful to match up the colors. And that would be the same with any brand, but just check and see if they can get you one because it's, it's a great tool to have. So I'm using the colors that I matched up and I'm just kind of stippling some paint on and I also use the Mr. Bottle to kind of blend it so that it really looks natural. I'm building up the color so even though it looks bright yellow and not what you see in the background it's just kind of I'm matching where there's more yellow in the paper I'm adding yellow first and just uh, building up many layers to achieve the effect that I'm going for. Once I'm done, I misted it and I'm using a paper towel to further blend those colors together and also to absorb the moisture so that I can move on to the next step. Next I bring in the stencil that I used on the side. This time I'm using the color Pinecone. This is adding another layer into my design. Next I bring in that rusty nail color. It looks a lot more vivid when I'm painting it here, but I will blend it in and I'll also enhance that color that's on the decoupage paper as well to make it more cohesive. Next I take a look at those drawers. I'm going to use Restore a Finish in Walnut and see if I can improve the look of the drawer fronts without having to do any stripping or refinishing on them. So again I'm using a finishing pad and I'm using the color Walnut. And this product just allows you to wipe it on and then wipe it off. And it really is great for reviving the way the wood looks. Looks better already, but I may come back again, do a little sanding, and try it one more time to see if I can get it to look even better. I'm really liking the way the front looks now. I have some touching up to do on that seam where the drop down part meets the desk. It seems like every step I take, I have to go back and touch up the last one. Speaking of taking steps, this is our last video as La Vintage Decor. Stay tuned because we're going to be making a big statement and changing our name to Statement Designs. You don't have to do a thing, just follow along and the channel name will change automatically. I'm so glad you're with me on this journey. Thank you so much for watching today. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and also hit the notification bell so you won't miss anything. 
These sites are all going to be changing, but today you can visit us at Live Vintage Decor on all of our social media. And again, they'll switch over as well. Stay well. Stay well.